Hello, everyone, and welcome to Food Tank's webinar series. This is Sarah Small. I'm Food Tank's Global Events Director, and I'm really excited about today's webinar with Shen Tong. Shen is a social activist and founder of FoodX. FoodX gives early stage companies who would otherwise be overlooked funding, expert coaching, and investor access as a means to drive innovation in our food system. And Food Tank's president, Danielle Nirenberg, was honored to moderate FoodX's demo day last December. We're also privileged to have Shen on Food Tank's Board of Directors. Uh, and today his presentation will discuss the types of companies that FoodX works with and why it's so important that their ideas are replicable and scalable. This webinar will be recorded and posted on foodtank.com afterwards. And you can follow along and participate uh, on Twitter using hashtag foodtank. Uh, so without further ado, Shen, it's wonderful to have you here today. And I'm excited to hear your presentation. I will give you the floor now. Well, thank you, Sarah. Thanks, uh, uh, Danny, to make this uh, possible and the uh, food tank, of course. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Shen Tong, and uh, let's uh, get right to it. And we're we're all uh, here because of uh, we we care about something uh, uh, that's uh, that's obviously important. Uh, we, we are what we eat, and uh, but what we eat uh, seems to have uh, uh, lost its way. And uh, in the, if you look at the, the global market of uh, just uh, food and beverages, that's a uh, $5 trillion a year uh, revenue market. And uh, in the US alone, that's $1.4 trillion. But it's safe to say, if you read uh, any number of uh, uh, research, uh, that probably two-thirds of that market uh, have uh, food look like uh, substances or objects. So these are food and beverages that are high in calorie and uh, uh, but, but with negligible um, nutrients. So it's not just uh, it doesn't taste that good. I mean people go crazy about it because it's addictive. It's not because it's uh, uh, nutritious and tasty. Uh, but also is uh, uh, bad for people's health and uh, and it's bad for uh, environment. So when we look at the, when we say food uh, is as form of uh, energy or a form of uh, a way of enjoyment, the what 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 it means is actually something much broader. It's is food and beverages, of course, but it's also agriculture, where uh, food come from, and because of that, it's also uh, environment. It's all about soil. And it's all about uh, water, right? But it doesn't stop there in terms of agriculture and then uh, food. It, it impacts immediately our health and the broader uh, environment. So, so, in fact, if we think about the future, the immediate future of uh, humankind, of our planet, any major challenges we're going to face whether it's uh, education or energy, transportation, even war, you name it. Food is not only related to it. The food issue or food crisis is central to all of that. So fortunately, there are groundswell of uh, food movement of uh, many different kinds, but together there is a uh, momentum that's going to uh, make possible some major changes. So when we look at uh, um, this rather broad and, and uh, large market, this complex market, that uh, it's need to be disrupted because uh, the current way is just not sustainable. And it can be disrupted because of this, uh, this growing momentum of, uh, of the food movement. So it takes many efforts. It takes more than a village. It takes many different kinds of efforts, uh, whether it's policy, or it's direct uh, uh, social protest, uh, or probably most successfully, is the, um, the behavioral change based on the uh, cultural shift. So these are really the pioneers that, that start to make impact in the last uh, couple of decades. Uh, the, the investigative journalists, uh, the uh, 
the social uh, and culturally conscious celebrity chefs, uh, storytellers, uh, bold and brave farmers, and, and that, that, that start to uh, uh, promote the ideas of, uh, of an alternative. So all of these people paved the way for the general public to start to wonder where the food come from, you know, uh, what is the, uh, what's, what is the uh, uh, cost behind the, uh, uh, the produce and the proteins and, uh, and what am I feeding my family and children? And uh, um, the, uh, uh, so, so, so I think roughly about by now, 20 to 30%, more than a quarter of American general public are seriously interested in eating right, and uh, uh, and 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 uh, that number is. Uh, these are the part of the population that's already con already committed. Whether they can always source correctly or not, this is a part of the American population already committed to uh, eating right. But two or three times of that, in other words, there's a majority of our population because of this cultural shift start to shift their behavior, even if they don't quite. Get the right understanding of the confusing labels, the traceabilities, uh, the, the, the 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 time, or the uh, the level of dispensable income to source right, cook right, and eat right. So there's so so we we do have uh, uh, this uh, uh, this momentum that uh, that without the market, the accessibility. To the right food and beverages, people want it. So that brings uh, a, a, what we we'll believe, what we believe, an important missing piece in addition to the policy environment and the cultural change, and that is uh, the business engine. So what we are uh, at FoodX, and uh, and we believe this is not just uh, uh, FoodX alone or the fund that that uh, that uh, uh, invest. In FoodX and in uh, uh, in our companies, in the uh, disruptive, innovative food startups, that's that that's, that's uh, SSV fund, which is, um, uh, I'm also part of. Uh, I'm a, a partner of SSV. We we believe we're just uh, a, a, a one of the catalysts joining this movement and then building and feeding uh, this food movement. So now I'll get into some of the particulars. Actually, the the uh, picture in the background you see is it's uh, the uh, it's a food center, um, and that's actually our inaugural call for some of the founders. Uh, and, and, and we have this co-working space. We uh, invite uh, uh, roughly ten to twelve companies every half year uh, from uh, from anywhere from all over the world, uh, and, and uh, they move into this uh, downtown New York uh, co-working space, and we provide. Uh, the uh, co-working environment uh, for we call it a, a cohort, and uh, uh, but we 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 through this uh, uh, environment as a starting point, we we'll provide a deep mentor network, uh, a, a partnership network, a business partnership network, and uh, SSV is uh, somewhat unique in the sense that uh, it, it, we're we're a multi-stage uh, uh, venture fund. So we actually start from the accelerator stage, which is uh, um, uh, generally considered uh, pre-seed round. And then we go up to what's known as Series B. So we will we'll stay with the company. So we're really not just an investor. We're, we're, we're more a partner uh, in, with each company that will invest up to four rounds. Uh, and and, uh, uh, and we're of, because we're of certain size, we're, we're, we're global top VC uh, venture capital in terms of performance and the size that 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 really uh, uh, help uh, to boost the 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 rest of the uh, 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 fundraising effort that uh, that companies uh, that grow fast uh, really uh, have to go through so so in addition to our own multi-stage long-term patient capital we also curate a co-investor network these are uh, either strategic or mission aligned uh, investors from uh, uh, food and beverage, agriculture, wellness, uh, clean green tech industries, or uh, mission fund, impact investment fund. So uh, another part of uh, um, 
the acceleration that we believe we can add value to these change makers are the, uh, uh, the, the what food that stand for, the thought leadership, the visibility that comes with the, uh, the FoodX, um, if with the, the FoodX image or the, or the brand using a corporate term. And, uh, uh, and last but absolutely not the least, that most of our, uh, similar to going to a graduate school, you know, most of our uh, founders uh, and uh, change makers find the uh, alumni network uh, very useful. So um, the right founders uh, often uh, know they're aggressive, they know how to uh, uh, approach uh, for help, how to take advice. They also give back. So, so the, uh, you, you have a very engaged network, not only of your own cohort, but cohorts, multiple cohorts of uh, FedEx uh, uh, alums. And uh, given the global network of uh, SS Ventures, uh, SSV, uh, our fund, which we have a, a dozen uh, accelerators uh, throughout the globe, there's also a global uh, founders of accelerator network. So, so we plug our uh, founders into the three levels of, uh, of like-minded uh, uh, startup entrepreneurs, uh, innovators, and change makers. So the, uh, um, now we look at uh, some of the, uh, the, the way in which we're trying to uh, uh, join this uh, movement and, and try to bring around uh, change. So we look at the, um, the our call for uh, applicants, our admission selection process, and the way in which we design curriculum, we uh, the way in which we uh, uh, foster relationship with uh, those core value propositions we just went through. We look at those first and foremost through impact. So, what impact each uh, of this uh, startup company is making? So, let's spend a, a second on purely business and financial perspective. For us, that if I'm wearing just my uh, uh, fund uh, partner hat, right? if we want to build unicorns, this is this is a term in recent history used uh, describing companies that go. Uh, that, that, that have hyper growth that get to a point of um, so a billion dollar or more, right? So that's they're called unicorns, or, or in earlier days called uh, black swans, right? So if we want to build that, you can't achieve that by building product and services. You're changing behavior. You're 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 help creating uh, habits and cultural trends. Yeah. So that's that's purely from business perspective. That's a that's a, that's a necessity. It's not. Uh, nice to have, but for us, we're we 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 we're, we're humble by the movement, but we're also very ambitious because that's needed. We're looking beyond that. It's not just uh, uh, the, the 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 hyper growth of a startup that we uh, we help and we invest in or we coach. It's also the uh, social and the environmental uh, impact. So the numbers here you're looking at. But we're actually looking at the number of aspects of, of uh, uh, social impacts and uh, environmental impact. I won't go into details unless uh, the, uh, the audience are, are interested. So, so basically, we're looking at not just profit, but also people and, and planet. So um, the, uh, I listed a few areas. Uh, this, uh, I use them because they're they are actual use cases, not just ideas. These are the areas of uh, our uh, Current portfolio, we have we, we so far have uh, made have made 23 investment in 19 companies and soon to be 30 companies because next batch of companies are are coming in uh, next month. They uh, uh, but these are the areas that the first uh, 19 companies um, have uh, have uh, uh, fashioned their solution uh, and build their their startup business. You know, they, anything ranging from uh, from hunger to uh, food waste to uh, uh, food accessibility to the food desert and uh, uh, and the local movement uh, local food uh, seasonal and uh, also focusing on farmers in the value chain and so on 
So I won't take the time to go through so some of these uh, uh, companies. So this is uh, uh, the, the the 17 companies we've so far launched, and uh, uh, I'll be uh, I'm very proud of all of them. I'll be more than happy to go into some of them in in the Q and A uh, uh, session. So the uh, um, now let's look at the uh, when we talk about triple bottom line, the, the triple P, right? the people, the planet, and the profit. The, the business sustainability is very important. For us, we have to do our core job right, which is making the fund a stellar fund, in addition to uh, looking at the overall impact and, uh, uh, and the, the triple bottom line accounting. So uh, the, the good news is, even though it's still early, even though we only have uh, uh, less than 20 companies uh, in this approach, and uh, and it's still early that we're hoping to to uh, to call upon, if not inspire, the rest of the full movement to uh, and and uh, the newcomers, uh, even the big companies, join join this trend of uh, investing in impact uh, to change food. But we do have this data point after a little over a year. So what do these numbers mean? So the uh, these numbers uh, means that. The, the acceleration is spreading quite quickly. These are some of the numbers. But let's just look at the financial numbers uh, uh, right away, so that I can leave more time for the questions. So the uh, the uh, uh, this is actually a, a, a daily number. It's only um, for the first ten companies, but uh, the uh, the revenue is growing exponentially. The uh, the venture backed funding by now we have six uh, and and this is again only uh, the formal launch of the first ten companies it's only last December uh, and uh, so it's only uh, seven to eight months but uh, so we already have a more more a fifty percent follow on rate and uh, and in financial terms uh, our leverage rate is five x that means this is really the the good news because we can't do it alone. That means each million I'm putting at work, following the thesis of impact investing, four, uh, uh, five million other investment came in with us. So we are building a, a, a network, a, a momentum, uh, a, a, a ecosystem in the in the uh, in the financial sector to help these companies, and uh, the companies themselves are these are. Superstar uh, founders. So, so uh, some of them start with the concept, but uh, just looking at the, the the first one or two cohort, more than half of the companies are already uh, uh, in, uh, in uh, post revenue uh, companies. So, one of the things I want to uh, finish with is uh, not only this concept of uh, of uh, farming black swans. I mean, the reason I use the image is that it's, uh, it was famously said by someone. In Silicon Valley, that uh, uh, that successful VCs, uh, venture capitals, uh, harvest uh, harvest black swans. Uh, the the rare phenomenon so that that really changes uh, things, right? But we really want to uh, farm, uh, sustainably farm the black swan. So, what we do here every day. Uh, at at FoodX and uh, through our uh, uh, partner network is to ask the question, are we making what's seemingly impossible into an in inevitable? So the difference is important, and that, that is uh, the, the, the lead for today's uh, seminar. And I kind of uh, uh, bury, I bury the lead, which is how do we scale up by scaling out? See, the difference is I can easily have a food fund focusing on consumer packaged goods, focusing on uh, tried and true uh, uh, culinary concept with uh, six restaurants in California, or 12 in, uh, in Chicago, or five in Manhattan, and franchise some, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. But that's not making impossible inevitable. There need to be a, a real change in how we grow, and how we locally process, how we transport, how we package, 
and how we prepare the food and how we feed ourselves, our families, our communities. Right. So we have to look at the, the impossibles and uh, and try to de-risk as much as we can for the change makers because they're the ones that's going to build this business solutions and the solution communities around it. So the one of the main focuses and is, is actually central to our investment thesis is to look at approaches that enable the little guys. So think of successful examples already uh, in the in the high growth, uh, hyper growth tech world. So uh, think of the, the likes of Google or, or eBay, where the digital efficiency, if you will, if you will, enables uh, people who before that couldn't easily publish. They have to go through the traditional publishing industry or or media industry. The gatekeepers, uh, the tastemakers, uh, the, the the cultural elite. Right? But uh, but after that, what's impossible become inevitable because everybody can publish, everybody can set up a, a storefront, everybody can, not only a storefront in the old Yahoo style, but uh, but uh, a direct P two P commerce. Right? That's uh, things like eBay. That 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 becomes uh, uh, the new normal. So so we're particularly focused on enabling the, the the little guys who otherwise wouldn't uh, be able to access a lot of uh, uh, major resources not only because we want to do good but because this is one of those rare moments in history and in in the marketplace where doing really well can be just focusing on doing good of changing the uh, the whole food market and food industry for the better. So with that note, uh, you know that's the uh, that's how we see our role and our responsibility, our privilege to build that business engine and feed into this food movement. So um, if you are if you have a innovative idea and and it doesn't have to be. Um, a, a, a do good and uh, um, uh, a uh, altruism uh, idea, any innovative business idea uh, that that could potentially uh, make a change in the uh, food related uh, uh, markets, come to us because we uh, we are we are set up shop to uh, to help people like you who are who are uh, uh, destined to make major changes. So now I'll open up for questions. Thank you, Shen. That was great. Uh, and we do have a lot of uh, questions from listeners. But just a reminder that for the next 15 minutes, uh, please continue to send in your questions, either using the chat box on your screen, or you can email them to me, Sarah, S-A-R-A-H, at foodtank.com. Uh, so I'd like to start by asking you, Shen, uh, the first question reads, what are some of the most uh, innovative ideas you have seen in your experience so far? Or can you give some examples of the 19 companies you've invested in thus far? Great, yeah. So uh, I'll just uh, pick up, uh, there, there, uh, there are two things that uh, are very interesting. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about the, the trend lines first, that uh, because we, uh, we get a few hundred applicants for uh, each of our uh, cohorts, each of our batch. So that's one of the most uh, exciting things as I read through. Uh, we're just at the end of a, a mission process uh, for our third cohort. And, and uh, even though it's, it's exhausting, it's daunting past that we, we have, a, we have a, a pretty sizable uh, screening and evaluation team, a couple of dozen people, industry experts and, and, and interns. But it's, it, you, you really see that uh, there's so many uh, exciting ideas and solutions that, uh, that uh, we, we, uh, we, we use uh, uh, tech clouds, actually, to, uh, to track uh, innovative ideas. There's uh, like 40 different areas that have real momentum. We just see a lot of uh, uh, applications, and, and, and uh, uh, they're really exciting. And, and even, even, even 
the, the most uh, uh, surprising, but I mean, in a way, it's not you know, it's not surprising is that there are areas we didn't anticipate that uh, that have uh, have uh, that's what essentially innovation is about, right? It's it's uh, what what seems like uh, uh, we, we didn't even think about that. What as long as the solution is there, it seems inevitable. I mean, it seems to be that that should be the way it is. So so let's just go through a uh, some some areas, uh, uh, but. Uh, the, the obvious ones are uh, the uh, say uh, Airbnb or Uber uh, for food. So so uh, so that's tagging tagging into um, uh, the the successes in, in similar uh, industries. But uh, but uh, unique to, to the food area, uh, there's uh, uh, the meal kits um, kits in general. So so the DIY the convenience. Uh, of uh, various kind of uh, do-it-yourself kit seems to really gain momentum. I, I, one of the companies in Brooklyn, uh, 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 the uh, Green Blender, sends a um, weekly box that's equivalent to uh, 10 uh, smoothies, uh, they, but they, they have a, a vibrant and, and very engaged uh, um, smoothie uh, following on their blog. They basically, we, we basically help this team to uh, to launch the company and then monetizing the uh, their their smoothie following uh, smoothie block following into a, a smoothie kit to home so similar to Blue Apron uh, Hollow Fresh and, and we see a lot of this kind of uh, uh, ideas uh, so so uh, uh, meal kit uh, from uh, from kitchens from your favorite chef uh, and, and and from certain category of cuisine. So, so um, the uh, the uh, uh, delivery is all the rage uh, for the last couple of day, uh, couple of years. So, um, the uh, uh, we have a few delivery companies like Foodie Four actually deliver from top Michelin star restaurants in Manhattan, and uh, uh, they, they're, they're other delivery companies, the Mount Trick, and, and uh, one of the uh, most innovative and, and particularly hugely disruptive delivery model is uh, the CSAs. So these are the consumer uh, uh, supported agriculture model, which been around for at least a couple of decades, right? But what we call the super CSA, right? that's what the uh, next organics is about. Um, they they actually compete really well with uh, GoodX, which uh, unfortunately um, hold all their operation outside San Francisco uh, last uh, uh, last week. But uh, so that's that's GoodX. That's uh, uh, a a um, um, Silicon Valley. Uh, Major uh, venture firm founded uh, startup. That's so. The, what we call the super CS day is uh, providing the killer app of what what we believe that made CSA model not yet mainstream. That is the people for people who get um, groceries to uh, to change their behavior to local and seasonal. But change it twice a year, and so, so it's only seven months. Uh, most of the CSAs deliver only part of the year, right? and like my family, uh, before we have natural organics, we have to source uh, from uh, six different uh, CSAs uh, to to get the, the the proteins and produce, and then we still have to do uh, grocery shopping in Chinatown or or, or in Whole Food, where we have to get the value add, right? The cured, the the uh, the. Uh, Preserved vegetables, and cured meat, the frozen. And so, so they what we believe the killer apps are uh, year-round CSA that has all of the both have the value add, have the protein, and have the uh, the produce. So, so that that's uh, not only particularly very disruptive. You think about it just give you one measurement in terms of overall account, right? So, every grocery item in the United States today have Roughly fifteen hundred miles behind it, so that contribute to a big part of the seventeen calories it takes to produce one calorie we Americans today eat. And so you think about the inefficiencies there, right? So if you can change that, we're not talking about thirty percent efficiency. We're talking about sixteen times, you know, or or thousand uh, six hundred percent of efficiency that can be achieved with uh, uh, by by disrupting. The, the major part of the current food system. So, so if we look through that lens, right, and uh, uh, take a direct consumer 
uh, model, uh, Fresh Direct. So uh, up until last year, it's still the gold standard of uh, online grocery shopping and delivery. So that's roughly 300 miles for each item. So that's 300 versus 1,500. That's already five, five x efficiency, right? And uh, with Natural Organics, even though they provide all of this work with a dozen, every given week, dozens of uh, CSAs and farmers and sustainable fisheries, their average is 80 miles. So, so, so this is very exciting as an example, but it also requires a lot of patience. So uh, we unfortunately see the, the, uh, the, the com a competing company, uh, I mean, that's market term. We don't see competition, we, we, don't, we only see other change makers, but but if, if execution is everything, so if you expand too quickly, if you're not patient, uh, the, uh, the, uh, a, a well-founded startup can also uh, fail. I'm not saying uh, Gonex failed, but they certainly have to scale back very uh, aggressively where uh, Next Organics has been growing uh, quite steadily. And, and there, it's, it's also a good example because both companies are in the same market here in New York. So, so that's uh, that's um, a couple of good examples. Uh, another one on the digital side of things, uh, I'll, I'll point out to. So it's not only about completely new novel models. There, there are also obvious models uh, like uh, using the first cohort that this survey is a pure business app. This is the anti Yelp. That means that so they're solving a very specific problem to help to improve the uh, the restaurant industry. So. Restauranteers really don't, don't they, they, they really uh, cringe. I mean, they, they hate Yelp and, and, uh, and TripAdvisor. And, and because uh, there's, uh, they don't have a chance to really improve and the, the system can, can, be, uh, can be gamed and, and, and sometimes uh, by design. So, so uh, they're basically democratizing mystery shopping uh, or, or uh, the secret shoppers. It's, it's an it's a obscure, um, consulting industry that you have those, uh, those, uh, those uh, shoppers that try out the services and products in retail hotels and, and especially restaurants and then consulting companies sell those reports for hundreds of dollars to uh, 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 or, or a monthly uh, uh, subscription uh, can be can be a, a fairly significant uh, uh, amount of money so so it's a pretty straightforward model of applying digital efficiency uh, in this case, the social model, the the, the Yelp model, but uh, but having highly curated uh, reviews sent directly to the restaurant. So here is an example that actually different from the last two. They they don't have a mission necessarily. It's just as much as we we uh, we uh, uh, we think that the the unintended effect of improving restaurants and and its food and services can 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 help the general public. Uh, to be honest, that's they're just a business app, right? But it's interesting that to see how our founders look at the how, how our founders look at the uh, uh, their overall goal and their overall mission, and uh, even their uh, go-to-market strategy. This is a, a screenshot of survey where this is business app, right? But the the one donation means that each time someone reviews a restaurant, survey will make a donation on their behalf. And they, they, I mean, it, it actually eat in, into their bottom line because this is not on the restaurant. This is on survey. Right? But they find it uh, compelling enough. They literally put this front and center in their offer. And so, so survey is uh, among the portfolio, not a, um, a, a impact uh, company per se, but they are, they are, they're doing this uh, uh, not intrinsically. But, but uh, uh, that's part of their their uh, their interface with their public. Right? So uh, and and uh, just one more uh, quick example, just to, to show how, how diverse the innovative ideas can be. True made food or true food makes the old vegetable ketchup. There 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 are dozens and hundreds of them, right? but they but they they manage to um, create their secret sauce literally. Uh, with the exact taste and uh, uh, texture, so it's the exact flavor and texture profile as the as the leading brand. So uh, so they they uh, so they, they got a distribution very quickly. I mean, you know, this, this is a CPG. This is a consumer package. They are first CPG company, 
but uh, uh, but because of that particular approach and uh, the, the the founder's ability of of uh, really leverage the network uh, and their sheer drive, of course, and passion, they they only only a few months into existence, so they got major distributions and they got carried by um, direct consumer uh, e-commerce and so on. And Kitchen Bowl is uh, uh, essentially a recipe uh, uh, recipe. So they, they uh, but it, they're, they're more uh, like holes for, for food. They use, uh, um, they use uh, I wish I can give you a demo of it. Uh, they use uh, uh, GIF, they use short uh, uh, video that cycles itself for each step. So this is, uh, for, for us, the, uh, we of course don't require the founders to see it as, as, a, as, a, as a certain impact are unintended. So for us, the impact here is that, as Mark Bittman said, as soon as people touch this food, whether it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, you don't have to be a farmer, but whether it's uh, just buying groceries or, or, uh, or cooking, you know, and, and the food at uh, Michael Pollan say that, that looks like food, that, that look like the, the, it's supposed to look right. As soon as people do that, 90% of the problem is solved because most of the the, the, the stuff that, that cause a lot of problems and inefficiencies and addictions yeah, uh, 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 in, in our food is highly processed. So, so for us, that's that's uh, uh, that's very important to to make that easy to, to provide that convenience. Thank you, Shen. Uh, and the next question uh, is: uh, Can you give a couple of examples of the mentors you work with, or how do you match startup companies with mentors? Oh yeah, so. Uh, it's actually an ongoing process. Uh, when when I say uh, patience, uh, this is a good question to translate that. So uh, we we uh, uh, our time horizon is over ten years. Uh, and then for food, we we have, we have like twelve to fifteen years uh, uh, thesis. That's two to three times of a normal farm. So in, in other words, we are, we by design can uh, can afford. Uh, we were designed to 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 do that. So uh, an average life cycle. Of our companies, uh, and even though FoodX is only a little over a year, but as V has been around for for more than two decades, so our average, uh, what we're, we're prepared for for FoodX companies, is it's average seven years. So as you go through those stages, our companies go through those stages, they will require different uh, kind of help, and so uh, so the domain is uh, pretty uh, straightforward. So if if you uh, like uh, uh, if you're a hardware company, I mean, you go smoothly is the um, it's a uh, smoothie vending machine. So, so we actually leverage our hardware center in Shenzhen, China. Uh, so there are there are hard, there are core domain areas that uh, uh, that will bring in uh, uh, experts and uh, uh, mentor uh, were, 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 were talks and sessions. But then there's uh, there's also uh, gross hacking aspects. Uh, there are there are for for digital uh, uh, tools or, or technology, at least as part of uh, the offering, or at least part of the enabling of business, will we'll, we'll match with technology uh, uh, advisors. If you uh, uh, look at the, the FoodX Mentor page, we, we also have a fair amount of uh, 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 visionaries, and, uh, um, and uh, that says the cultural framing, that's understanding what we're doing and how that connects to the overall uh, cultural trend and change making and, and behavioral shift. So we have uh, one of the nation's uh, foremost hunger experts. We have uh, 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 pioneers of online food movement, like like uh, the founder of Food Tank here, uh, uh, Danny Nuremberg. We have uh, uh, people like uh, investigating journalists, like, like Michael Moss from uh, the Pulitzer winning New York Times journalist. That we, we those are uh, regular uh, mentor sessions that that uh, uh, help to uh, help to convening uh, help the discourse for our founders to to kind of uh, uh, be reminded and to uh, also to understand to learn the the, the larger picture. So it, it's it's a, it's a combination of uh, um, of a series of lectures and. Uh, and uh, and uh, you could be uh, visiting. Uh, we take each cohort to visit uh, Stone Barns, where one of our mentors, Dan Barber of Blue Hill and Blue Hill on Stone Barns, not only um, uh, uh, as education farm go through the uh, farming practice and uh, uh, understanding the uh, the farm to table uh, approach, 
but also to share a meal. I mean, Dan actually cooks with a cohort for 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 elaborate lunch, which is which is fantastic. So so there's all, all kinds of and and most importantly, it's not a fixed curriculum. You know, we we learn as much from our entrepreneurs, not just in innovative ideas, but also the evolving needs. Uh, each cohort is different. Uh, the market's change uh, changing quickly, and each stage is different, and each stage for each company is different. So it's a constant uh, process of adjustment. Thank you, Shen. Uh, and the next reader asks, does Foodex calculate the value across the whole value chain, including the farmers? Is there sustainable wealth creation for farmers? So, um, yes, we're pr proud to say that this is, um, when I was able to list farmers as one of uh, the solution areas, we believe we already have some idea. Uh, that's. Uh, the the uh, just uh, just briefly, I think we're running out of time. That natural organics is a good example. That this this farmers now uh, can um, the the uh, in their Brooklyn center, farmers uh, uh, of of various kinds. This can be uh, urban growing from uh, millennials in uh, Brooklyn. Uh, it's a tattoo covered beard uh, millennial um, do, doing uh, hydroponic, uh, or small farmers that, that before that that uh, had very difficult difficult time to find distribution, they bicycle their stuff in to uh, to the uh, to the natural organic uh, center. So because of uh, that, but not only limited to that, natural organic is actually a, a, a B Lab uh, certified. Um, so they're they're uh, B Corp. It's, it's not it, it, that's uh, the the highest level of uh, I think um, benefit corporation. So um, but but that's not enough. So we're we're really looking at. Um, uh, Different uh, uh, aspects, uh, but but again, focusing on, on enabling the smallholders and focusing on really innovative, potentially uh, explosive or disruptive ideas. And uh, one of uh, uh, so so agriculture is really a major focus, and we have uh, a hybrid uh, of uh, of a food and agriculture a company called Renewable. And uh, what Renew Renewable does is to take uh, food waste. And convert with a very high uh, uh, efficiency, the seventy-five percent transfer rate, into organically certified hydroponic uh, fertilizer. I mean, fertilizer is not the right word. It's uh, uh, it's bio nutrients, right? So, uh, so it's it's uh, it's um, it it addresses uh, and, and its model is not just uh, uh, the bio fertilizer uh, nutrients coming into uh, in the form of a bottle. In a in a in a shop or on a, on a direct consumer e-commerce site, it, it, it also uh, uh, provide the uh, the system, the machines and know-hows to for for farms to have it locally, so they can just pr uh, they can just process um, their 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 uh, otherwise wasted uh, produce into something of uh, not just value add, of high value. So, so those are the examples that, that we're looking for. And we, we uh, uh, one thing I want to emphasize, and this, this is such a good question because it's all about soil and not all about water and therefore all about farming and farmers. And uh, the, the millions, globally, the millions of smallholders are the ones who are really looking at and trying to find ways in a, in a, but by light touch. Meaning that light touch meaning two things. One is that we cannot describe True innovation, semantically. So if I can list the forty areas that I mentioned about and say, well, it, we can change this uh, 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 hundred this way or that way. If I can describe it, it's often not <laughs> not the real, uh, not true innovation. So so the change makers are the ones that, for for whatever reason, that 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 that, that, that come up with that idea. And for me, a serial uh, uh, entrepreneur, I founded uh, four companies be before I become business coach and investors. Uh, it, it, it's, uh, is that I have to remind myself that uh, uh, that the, the ideas I give, and this becomes a running joke for that, is that uh, uh, Shen's bad ideas, right? So the ideas I give are by definition bad ideas if they're not uh, in the DNAs and genes of the, uh, of the entrepreneurs, of the innovators, because they're the ones uh, that's building this, uh, this, this solution. So, and, and solutions are often somewhat surprising. Like you think about a uh, solution like renewable, uh, it, it solves uh, potentially solve all these problems, 
and it's kind of obvious, right? but uh, we, we just didn't think of. So, so we, we really don't apply heavily a top-down approach about what kind of solution. We know the general areas we want to focus on, uh, again, scaling up by scaling out. So in this case is that what are the solutions, uh, the innovations uh, with, uh, with a light touch that can really solve a big problem for smallholders? Right? Another company just joined the next cohort. I, I won't say the name, but we're not, we're not ready to announce yet. But they have this polar uh, panel powered uh, storage unit that can extend the life of uh, and the freshness of, of the uh, the harvest of produce, of fruits and vegetables uh, for, for a couple more months. So that really changes the dynamics of uh, the, uh, not just food waste in that case, but the, but the business bargaining power for the smallholders with distributors when they're not under the pressure of, uh, of the natural, uh, natural decay of, of their produce or, or harvest early and apply a lot of chemicals outside and, and so on. So, so those are fantastic solutions that we hope will, 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 will move the needle a little bit. Thank you, Sean. It's really exciting to hear about some of the innovations uh, that do exist. And we have just one uh, time for one more question. So here's a fun one to end on. Uh, what would you say is the most burning issue in the food industry right now? Or what issue within the food industry do you think companies need to address now rather than later? Um, it's not an issue, it's an approach. And, and uh, at least that's a burning uh, issue in my mind, is that when we the, the, the awareness of the food problem is widespread now. I just came back from Milan where the entire current World Expo, that's the Olympic of, 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 uh, of businesses, right? I mean, that it's a hundred, more than 100 year history every five, five years. I, I think for Americans, uh, when you think about the uh, uh, Stark Enterprise, that's, that's the World Expo, right? the, the Ironman. So the entire World Expo this year is in Milan and devoted to food. It's the largest food event ever. And uh, so the awareness and, 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 and the question the expo asks is uh, how, how do we feed the planet, how do we feed, uh, feed uh, the 9 billion people uh, by 2050, right? But what, what I worry about, as I mentioned earlier, about uh, looking at the food innovation through tech lenses is that people immediately think about uh, bioengineered food and production. People think within the frame of calorie counts, right? But, but, uh, but what we believe that is most essential and it's still largely missing in the, uh, 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 where we're not having enough uh, 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 visibility, we're understanding and, 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 uh, and uh, inspired action is a completely different approach. That is to work with nature and to work with culinary tradition. And think about this. I, I, you know, as, as we come from the background of uh, of uh, uh, of funding ourselves and uh, and investing in high tech companies, right? So for us, and I'm personally, I'm a modern trained biologist. So it's not in my second nature to think about uh, think about this this way. We'll, we'll think about um, a biotech or or uh, or uh, um, uh, nutrients that that uh, if it's not calorie but you know, uh, nutrients that we can we can produce a lot and, and uh, feed people very quickly with those kind of tech modern tech and scientific approach but what's missing and therefore we have this major opportunity is to understand that even from a pure engineering and scientific perspective the most resilient system that is right in front of us underneath us and around us is nature and it, has, it, it, it is so resilient, even after decades of a soil depletion, of a concerted, unintended, but concerted effort by result to destroy that nature. They can be, they can be recovered very, very quickly. We just have to stop the the bad practices and make a course, uh, course uh, correction. So that's for the agriculture part of the understanding that the that the the you know. How to work with nature, right? The second aspect is how to work with culinary tradition. We don't have to reinvent food, and there are, there are very rich heritage and and, and, and culture that that uh, uh, have all these tried and true ways of preparing food uh, for uh, to 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 feed the planet. 
So that's uh, that's the the main thesis for us, which is again to work with nature, and to work with culinary traditions. We're not uh, rejecting uh, scientific new scientific discoveries, and they can be uh, part of uh, uh, the, the solution, and they can really help accelerate some of the the solutions uh, going back to. To nature, I mean, the, the storage solution I described do use uh, uh, solar uh, energy, and uh, it, it uses uh, material science that wouldn't be imaginable for for their tent, for their for their uh, uh, different uh, uh, components wouldn't be imaginable even 50 years ago. Right? So, so but but we see that as as uh, as uh, as uh, secondary as help to restore nature and to restore our relationship. Uh, mankind's relationship with, uh, uh, or humankind's relationship with uh, with nature and with current tradition, and uh, I, I think without that, without that uh, shift of mentality, uh, the the awareness and the sense of crisis can be misguided in terms of generating that inspiring solution. Thank you, Shen, for joining us today. And thank you to all of our listeners for sending in their questions. It was truly a pleasure to have all of you. I just want to let you know our next webinar will be on August 25th at noon Eastern with uh, David Bergvinson of the International Crops Research Institute for the Semi-Arid Tropics. He'll pre be presenting on digital agriculture. Uh, you can register today on foodtank.com. So thanks again to everyone and especially to Shen for uh, participating with us today. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Good luck to be here. Thanks, Sarah.